What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. So as many of you may know, I released my first Helix preset pack. And a huge thanks to those of you who have picked it up already. The reception has been awesome and I've gotten a ton of positive feedback. I'm super stoked you guys like it and I'm glad it's helping you guys out. But here's the thing, you can buy any number of Helix preset packs from any number of far more talented guitar players and home studio producers than myself. But I think the real question is, what do we do once we get these presets and how can we integrate them into our own workflow and productions? So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to hit on some key topics on how I would use these types of presets in my own productions. And hopefully we can get you up and running recording your own music a little bit faster. Now this goes without saying, but I gotta say it anyway. Your mileage may vary. We may be using the same presets, but there are a lot of variables that go into making music. Example, each of our guitars may be different. Our playing style is definitely different, and our recording setups are gonna vary widely across many different types of setups. The point is, take these things into consideration. And most importantly, don't be afraid to tweak, adjust, and make these tones your own. To demonstrate this, I retracked a portion of my song, Beautiful Burden, off of my EP, Ample Chattels. If you like what you hear, head on over to Bandcamp and pick up the track, or of course, stream it everywhere music is streamed, i.e. Spotify, iTunes. It's available everywhere. So let's listen to the track, and then we'll head over to the computer, and I'll show you a thing or two that I would do to integrate these types of presets into my productions. If you're into guitars, metal riffage, mixing, and everything in between, hit subscribe and follow along. Right. Well, so um, this is several days later. See, I was having some problems with my screen capture and uh, figured it out and realized it was because of a setting I had adjusted. So all we can do is learn from our mistakes, right? So we have our Helix patches inside of our Helix device. We're ready to record. One important thing to remember is gain staging. Now, Gain staging, it's one of those topics that gets kind of kicked around on the internet and it can mean different things to different people. But what I'm talking about is bringing my tones into my DAW at a reasonable level that gives me some headroom to mix at the end of the day. Now, when you layer instruments and drums and synths, basically when you layer all these sounds on top of each other, frequencies build up and even if you can't hear them you know you want headroom to work with them before i get derailed let me show you what i'm talking about when i bring my tones from my helix basically anything if i'm mic in acoustic same thing vocals i'm shooting for an input of somewhere between negative 18 db and negative 9 maybe negative 6 db i shoot for negative 12 as my center point but overall that's what i'm going for is around negative 12 no hotter than negative six what the hell am i talking about if we take a look at this guitar track and um i bring in this level meter we will see where it's coming in at 
So yes, that was just panned to one side, I know. But if you, if you noticed on the meter, it was around negative 11 and a half, negative 12. I'm giving myself headroom to work with. Now, before anybody has something smart to say, I put the level meter before the processing that I did. I did do a little bit of EQ and multi-band compression. So relax, all right? Um, if we take a look at the level meter on the drums here, So we're hovering around negative six. That's pretty hot compared to everything else, but with Superior Drummer, that's just generally where I end up landing there. And it's just negative six at the highest point with the snare. That's about at the top of my threshold. Like if we go over to the bass here, if I was to put this level meter on the bass, let me check out the bass. So we're around negative 18, negative 17, bumps up to negative 16, depending on what's being played. Again, giving myself headroom, especially with the low end that can build up. Now, how can we control this? Well, inside a Helix, there's a few ways. Device not connected, that's spectacular. What are you talking about? The last line of defense, as far as presets go, is right here at your output. And if you look at this dial, you can control your input and your output to get to the level that you want inside of your DAW. You can also do it if you're running all your effects in parallel, like this patch is, and I'm not talking about the mix of these effects, I'm talking about the level. If you bring down the level of this reverb, it'll do the same thing. If you bring down the level of the EQ, it'll do the same thing. You can control it there. It's just easier to control it at the end, I think, but you have options. And the reason why they do this is because if you're doing a lot of additive EQ, you're gonna to wanna to bring down the overall level and that's what you'll do there. You can also do it right here at the channel volume for your amp block. You can control your level there. So there's a few different places inside of Helix that you can do it, okay? Inside of most DAWs, you have several different options as well. So I'm just, I'm using Studio One. This is how I work. This is my DAW of choice. I'll show you what to do in here. And so you can see with, with, with a Superior Drummer, I am, cutting 15 dB because it comes out so hot of Superior Drummer. And that's something I could definitely mess with, tweak, and adjust. Um, but because these presets, they're doing all the processing of the drums inside of the plugin, oftentimes it comes out a little bit hot. It's just something I've adjusted to using Superior Drummer. It's not a perfect process, but because of that, I, I want to bring down my drums a little bit here. You can see you can control the input gain there, which is nice. You have that option. There's also a plugin inside of, let me just get rid of these level meters. There's also a plugin inside of Studio One. Um, it's called the Mix Tool. So if we just drag that on here, you can also control the overall gain right here. And you want to do that before you adjust your your uh, volume slider or your you know your slider on your mixer, and I feel like it's a preference to do it here rather than using the slider on your channel, because the resolution as you cut in dB gets less and less accurate. Like the biggest gap from here to here, negative six, that's a big gap. But then if you look at like negative twelve to negative twenty four, it's not as big. Same thing, you kind of lose resolution. So it's just easier to control things right at the beginning and then you're kind of starting at an overall kind of even bait, like an even keel, an even playing field, and you can adjust your sliders as you're mixing from there. Cool? That makes sense? I hope it does. It's a little rambly, I realize, but the point I'm trying to make is you want to keep your things, your individual pieces of your track at a relatively controlled level. So negative six is where our drums are at, our guitars, are hovering around negative 12. Like if we were to put that level meter on the guitar bus. We're at negative 15. 
as we saw before, we are about negative 18 for the bass. So you can add in all this stuff and you can see that we have layers of guitars. So when you're layering stuff, that can end up building up. You can build up frequencies, you build up volume. So that's what we're talking about gain staging with these helix tones and just the helix in general. And that kind of same methodology can be applied to, like I said, when I record acoustic guitars and when I record vocals, I shoot for that negative 12 as well. Sometimes it gets a little bit hotter, sometimes it's a little bit lower. I don't want to go too much lower, but then I know I'm giving myself headroom, space to work with. Another thing I want to touch on is unless you have a perfect ear or you are just a magician or some sort of amazing studio engineer guru, there's going to be some level of post-processing you're going to need to do. Now, a common practice that's done in the real world is called top-down mixing. I learned this from studying and watching a lot of Nolly's uh, Creative Live Masterclasses, his Ultimate Recording Machine Masterclass. Anytime Nolly has some sort of training, I've seeked it out and applied it to my workflow because I like the way his mixes sound. So I do what's called top-down mixing. When I begin my mixing process, I immediately put on my top-down mixing effects chain. And I've gone over this before. Uh, there, I'm not gonna go over it in depth here. You can look those up. As a matter of fact, I'll put it, I'll put it up wherever, you know. So basically I'm doing a little bit of EQ. I'm, I'm basically trying to make it sound a little more polished right at the, the beginning. And again, if you study Nolly, if you study his process, and if you go through some of my older videos on this exact topic, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm doing a little bit of EQ, then we're going into some compression, and then I have a little bit of post EQ as well, just a little bit more brightening up, okay? And then of course I'm going into a limiter. Isn't it cool how much bigger that plug-in interface was than the rest of them? So right off the bat, I have that happening. And then the restream, ignore that. This is just, I'm sending my DAW audio to OBS. All right, deal with it. So I am doing some level of processing. If you can make a Helix tone and have it sit in a mix and not have to do this, hey man, more power to you. You're a better mix engineer than I am. And honestly, I'd like to see your workflow because I want to learn from it. That being said, I do some level of post-processing. It's getting less and less over the years because I'm getting better at settling on a sound that sounds much more mix ready. And that's what a lot of these preset packs or presets, these tones are geared towards. You know, I'm trying to get closer and closer to mix ready. That's the way I look at things in the context of a full track, a full mix, okay? So I'm doing, a, we'll go over it quickly, not super in depth. I have a lot of videos on how I mix guitars. My process is pretty much still the same. I just have to do less work, the better I get at it. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a little bit of EQ. I'm rolling off some of that high end sizzle and then I had a whistly frequency. So just show you what it's doing. <laughs> It's not doing a ton. Then I brought in the Pro MB, which is a multiband compressor, and this is what I'm using to control the palm mutes, the bloom of those palm mutes, and that low end that's often associated with it that can build up super, super quick when you have different layers, especially you know when you're double tracked and you have bass going on, kick drum. You want to control the low end so you can see what this is doing and when it's doing it. <laughs> So it's maybe cutting one and a half, two dB, only when the palm mutes are taking place. So again, we're just controlling that low end. So I'm doing that on both the guitars. Um, I have these droney guitars happening and I'm kind of doing something that I've talked about before. I use the solo, the, the DAT solo preset from the preset pack. And I did a little bit more like making it sound lo-fi and spaced out around us. So we, we started at a good bass. So if I turn off these effects, this is what it sounds like. Actually, that's totally dry guitar. So I didn't even, I turned off the reverb and everything.
And then I wanted more of a lo-fi effect, so I just have some EQ cutting off some of the high end, rolling off some of the low end. I know, it sounds like shite for the most part, but the reason why I do that is because it's layered in back there. It's ear candy. It's adding something to the overall vibe of the sound, so. And then if I add in some of the analog delay and room reverb, that's, this is what that sounds like. Pretty cool. And then in the mix. Definitely a little bit buried, but again, it's I don't want to draw your attention to it too much. I just want you to know that there's something creepy happening back there. Cool. And then we're talking bass. I have a little bit more EQ happening, cutting out some whistly frequencies, boosting a little bit of low end there. And then just a little bit of limiting. Wow, that's so teeny tiny and cute. That's it, that's all I'm doing with the bass. Now the point of these presets was for you guys to be able to just drop them, drag and drop them into your Helix device and get off and running. And you can see it doesn't take a ton of post-processing to get them to sit in your mix, at least for me. I wanted to take one of my favorite tracks that I've recorded. It's called Beautiful Burden, by the way, from my Ample Chattels EP. If you dig this track, check it out. I appreciate it. It's of course available for sale on Bandcamp and streaming everywhere. But I wanted to kind of show you that you could get these tones to sound good in a mix pretty easily with not a ton of work. And I think this is a good example. So take into consideration your gain staging, making sure you're not coming in too hot into your DAW or whatever you happen to be recording in and realize you're going to need to like tweak these to your preference, to your sounds, you know? And if that means adjusting blocks inside a Helix, adding some more EQ, taking some EQ away, there's a lot of variables, your guitar, your pickups, your playing style. So think about those things. And most importantly, like dive in, start recording and have a good time. All appropriate links down below in the description, including links to my music. And if you dig what I'm putting down, hit subscribe and follow along. So the point of this video was basically to demonstrate a use case, how these fit in a mix, how I use them, a few little things to take into consideration, some tips, tricks, and things to consider really. I hope this helps you integrate these presets into your workflow. And I hope some of the tips were helpful. If you have one of the Helix products and you found this video helpful and you dig how these tones sound, they are available as my preset pack on my webpage, nickhillmixmusic.com. If I missed anything or some things are still a little bit unclear or you have even more questions, bring them to my next Saturday live stream. I do a live stream every Saturday night. I call it Late Night Saturday Hangs, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bring your questions and we'll see if we can get them answered. But until then, thank you guys so much for being here. Special shout out to those of you supporting me on Patreon and of course here as members on YouTube. And if you're looking for other ways to support me, the channel, and what we're doing here, I have music for sale on Bandcamp, and of course, streaming everywhere music is streamed. Don't forget, pick up your Riffs merch while we still have it. Thanks again, guys, for being here. I hope you're all doing well. Stay safe, take care of each other, and we'll see you in the next one.